This part of the modification is complete. Now we actually have direct airflow straight through into the airbox. Hello folks, welcome to the next cruiser cars. Golf R, we're gonna continue on with the upgrades. I'm gonna do the intake mod on the Golf R. I have a partially modified intake and we're gonna finish it. Two new things to do. Uh, one of them is installing a part and the other one is a modification. What I have previously done is an AFE high flow air filter and the snow guard removal, as well as the uh, CTS turbo inlet pipe, which is down in here. You can barely see it, but there's a, a metal upgraded bigger pipe back there that goes directly into the turbo. This hose here, this is plastic and it's corrugated, so it's really turbulent for the air. Everything comes in through here fairly smooth through a nice free flowing air box. And then this jumbles up all the air before it tries to go smoothly into that turbo inlet pipe. This pipe is going to get replaced with a silicone hose. The next thing and probably something that I should have done many years ago is this intake system. This is a full straight through shot. This goes all the way through to the back. Cold air fires in through there, it goes straight through, and then it hits on your, your intake and your oil filter. It kind of cools it, this stuff a little bit from the outside, but there was recently some tests done that proved that it's only a few degrees hotter if you block off the back of this, and that funnels all the air through this as a tunnel, which then goes down and into the air box. This is not something I'm going to be able to do today, but I have ordered the part to block off the back of this. But what I do want to do is that the air only is able to come into this side, and this side is completely blocked off. It's kind of dumb. People have proven that you can cut this out, and it doesn't really have a big impact of putting too much moisture into the air box. And then you have a direct airflow where the air is going to come in, directly get pumped directly into the airbox, more of a direct shot ram air effect. I'm going to Dremel this out and then we'll get a better ram air effect into the airbox and the better silicone hose and that will complete the air intake mod which gets you to around 97 or 98 percent of the best air intake that you can get on the market by just doing those changes. High flow air filter, silicone hose, turbo inlet pipe and this air plenum modification. Here's the parts. This is the new air intake hose and two new clamps. Now this part goes on after the filter. There's no instructions with this, but I'm gonna clean it first. I'm gonna wash it with soap and water inside and out because you're putting it after the filter. There's any dust or dirt and crap in there, which I looked in it and it looked kind of dirty. So I'm gonna clean it out first. Also, if you have a GTI, some of the newer GTIs actually have venting here, which the air goes in through your grill and then it's able to escape up through here and into this. The R's don't have that, it's fully blocked off, but I am not gonna cut this open because I think it's been proven to have very minimal impact. Even you can get 3D printed Ram air scoops for the GTIs, which go in behind the grill and then it's supposed to funnel the air up through little grate holes. It's also been tested airflow wise and temp wise and it had almost no effects. I'm gonna leave this part stock, but cut this part open and we'll be able to do that. I can gain access by removing this whole piece or just opening up the top of it and then I'll see how I wanna do it. In order to get this top plate off, it's two Torx T25 screws, just one on each end. So that's easy enough, just loosen these ones off. And then there's one clip right back here, right in the middle, just pull that back, or forward I guess, and then this piece comes off. And then this is the actual air channel here. The front has those two tabs on it, so you just kind of have to like wiggle and pull forward, and then you can get that channel off. This is where the air comes in, it comes down here, and then it gets funneled into the air box. Then you take two more screws off of the side of that intake plenum area, and then the whole thing can be pulled out of the way. Pull up on this plastic on the outside, and then you push down on the inside, and then this gets this air channel loose. And now I'm just trying to get it off of this piece, because you don't have to take this piece off. This all separates, and then this can stay on the car, because this goes into the air box. This can come off too if you want, but you don't have to. It's only being held on by that one clip. And then this whole channel will be able to come out, and then I can start making the cuts on this side. And this is where we want the air to come straight through. But in order to do that effectively, I'm just gonna take this piece off first and then we can get good access to it and we can cut that open. And why they don't do this from the factory, I don't know. Likely because they're paranoid that too much moisture is gonna get straight shot down into this, into this area here. But like I said, many people have done this over the years. For the past five years since these Mark 7s have come out, people have been doing this. There's been really no problems with it. So we're gonna do it. Now that this piece is out, we can clearly see that uh, this is how it's open from the factory on that side. 
and this side is completely blocked off. Those two will be easy to reach. This one here will be a little bit harder because it's so sunken in. This is the piece that I did not take off because this is a coolant hose. There's really no need to really mess with it too much and this is just how it forces air down into the air box. Okay, a tip like this is actually working better. Just a, uh, a sanding cone and then I can just plunge it in and it melts through the plastic and cuts through the plastic pretty easily. Let me show you. Okay, this part is now done and uh, those are my cuts. I found this out using that sanding cone and then I just hand uh, deburred it with a knife and with a sanding little block. So I got rid of all of the shrapnel and stuff that was left over, any little filings that were on the outside. I made sure to get those out. So I've since washed it, cleaned it, deburred it. So this is ready to go in the car and uh, now it's able to breathe from both sides and passenger and driver side. That's the whole point is to open that side up for the direct path of air into the air box. This part of the modification is complete. Now we actually have direct airflow straight through into the air box. All right, that stock air hose came off super easy. I just loosened off this one stock uh, pinch clamp and then the other one just kind of pulled straight off of my turbo inlet because it's metal and it was, wasn't was really on there that great. So here's the CTS hose. I just need to figure out what proper orientation is. I think it's like this and I've actually heard that they branded it wrong and I think that's right. So it's gonna go on like that, but they put their logo on the bottom. So you're never gonna see it. I did um, just quickly wash it and wipe it and uh, it's ready to go on. Now I don't know much about clamps, but this uh, the clamp that it came with was a breeze and uh, it was already pre-sized. So I just kind of slipped it on. So that'll be in that orientation. Then the bigger one goes on this orientation. I'll just got to get it on there, tighten it up. All right, the silicone hose inlet is now done. And actually when the proper orientation, the logo is visible by the side. And uh, that seemed to be the best orientation. I just pivoted around until it laid nicely where it aligned up with the turbo inlet and the air box. So I think we're good to go there. That upgrade is complete. I can get rid of this one and just hold on to that because that's the stalker. Have to put that cover on and then we're ready to go test this. One last thing about this opening mod. If I ever do decide that I want to close that up again, really all I have to do is put a piece of tape over it. A little piece of black Gorilla tape or something. Just cover up those holes is all you would have to do to block that off. If you're really concerned about the uh, moisture and stuff getting right into the air box, but it should be fine. So that's that intake mod. It's certainly going to be better, but how much better? Actually, that does sound better to me. That's well worth it just for the noise factor alone. Yeah, you can certainly hear a lot more air rushing into the engine. So that's the best modification you can do to the intake on these Mark 7s is open up that front air dam, put in a high flow dry filter, put in a turbo inlet pipe and a silicone hose. And then you've got 98% of what the most expensive air intake is. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.